Paul Wilbur has been singing messianic worship music for over 35 years. With over 20 albums recorded in four different languages, Paul has helped believers around the world draw closer to God. In his newest album, Revive, Paul brings back some classic worship songs that have inspired generations of Christians. Well, your music transcends culture and continent, and you've ministered in over 70 nations. So what do you feel is the message behind your music, and why do you feel God has given you such a platform? Mm. Those are all good questions. The, the music that God has given to me has always been out of my personal relationship with Him. Uh, although I have a bachelor's degree in music and a master's degree in music and studied in Europe, um, for me, the songwriting is not a craft that I've learned, but it's a, a gift that comes from God. And the lyrics are all taken from the scripture. Sometimes just right out, I'll be reading in Psalm whatever, and it's like, whoa, there's a song right there. And, do, 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 do. and, and I think that's why it transcends, because the word of God uh, stands forever. It was true 3,500 years ago, it was true 2,000 years ago, it's still true today, and it's full of life. So I, that's why it transcends cultures and continents. I love the way you said that. I'm going to use that too, <laughs> cultures and continents. Uh, it transcends languages, um, and it is the language of, it's the ultimate language of love. Mm. Now, most people know you as a singer and a songwriter, but you were also an author and a teacher, and you've written a book called Touching the Heart of God, Embracing the Calendar of the Kingdom. And one of the central messages in your book is the King of Kings, God, and his invitation to us um, for feasts and festivals and special appointed times. Um, so why do you think as believers today, it's so important that we, we enter into those feasts and festivals? That's another good question. And the, the thing is, Simi, that we have come out of a kingdom of darkness. All of us were separated from God because of the fallen nature of man and sin. He brought us into another kingdom, the kingdom of God, where we live as Jew and Gentile. Uh, the kingdom of God has always been Jew and Gentile. A lot of people think Old Covenant Jews, New Covenant Christian. It's all kingdom from Genesis through Revelation. It's one kingdom, and it's a one story to all the earth. Every kingdom on earth, a natural kingdom, has a series of celebrations that tell the story of that kingdom. Well, the kingdom of God is a real kingdom, and he has a series of of events, celebrations that express the kingdom. And, and it's been fascinating to me why the church has not embraced these things. And so in the book, I try to break down the stigma that these are Jewish feasts. In fact, if you read in Leviticus 23, the Lord says, these are my feasts. These are my celebrations. These are my appointed times, says the Lord. And he says that over and over and over and over. So you would think that a, a Christian reading the Bible would say, hmm, well, that's what the book is about, to try and get Christians to go, hmm. So as Christians, how do we know which feasts or which celebrations that we follow and which we don't? Is it just, why, there Why wouldn't we one? celebrate them all? Um, because they, they all highlight a victory of our King, King Jesus. Yeshua, the Jewish Messiah, who is the, the Messiah, the king of the whole earth. And so when he says, these are my feasts, if we belong to the king, why wouldn't we want to celebrate? They're invitations. People look and they say, oh, you're trying to put us under the law again. I, I want to, <laughs> what are you talking about? These are invitations from the king to come and celebrate his victories. But why do we set apart separate days, separate traditions, when we've got the invitations from the king says, this is what I'd like you to do on this day. These are not have to's. You don't have to celebrate Passover. You don't have to eat unleavened bread. 
You don't have to celebrate, but they're invitations from the king. He says, come to my house and let's celebrate. Why wouldn't anybody who loves God want to do that? I wish we had more time, but Me I do too. want to get this question in. You have a new album, Revive, Songs mm -hmm. of Lamb and Israel's Hope. What do you hope that people will get from listening to this album? Well, I was listening months ago to some of this music that, that really spurred worship in the early Messianic revival of Jewish people coming to follow Jesus as the Messiah. And I said, wow, this was really good music, but it's dated. You know, it's 30, 40 years old. So I picked uh, a dozen of my favorite songs, went back into the studio and gave them a little kick. And so there's uh, all kinds of styles in here. There's, there's a, maybe a little bossa nova. There's a little, can I say, rock. And um, it, we, I contemporized some of that old music and it's, it's still got it. It's a lot of fun. I know people who remember Lamb, the group Lamb from the 70s, and Israel's Hope from the 80s, my group, will enjoy these new settings. It's a lot of fun. It still carries the same anointing with a little bit different sound. Well, I really enjoyed listening to it and reading the book. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Us.